All right, everybody. Welcome. It's Thursday night. It is time for week four of I Believe. And I'm super excited that you guys are joining me tonight. I am Rachel Hansen, uh, the newest executive director in the Landy organization. And tonight um, we're going to be covering like the nitty gritty of your show. So we're going to get into that in just a minute. Um, but first, a little bit about me. Um, I've been with Pampered Chef for about six and a half years. I started after I, I was laid off from my job a week before my oldest was born, and it was amazing because I wanted to be home with him anyway. So when he was about three and a half months old, I said, you know what, why don't I try this and see what happens? Um, I had been carrying the health insurance, so this was going to be a way for us to make a little bit of money to make up the difference in the health insurance costs that we now had. So uh, it grew from there, obviously. It's been the best decision ever. I uh, love the free vacations every year. My family loves them too. Um, I have two kids. I, my oldest is now six and a half, uh, Jordan, and my youngest is four and a half, Nola. And so you guys saw the, the pictures of those two on the, on the event page. That's them. Um, so a little bit about what we've done. As of conference this, this past year in August, I went to conference with just two directors in our organization. And as of December 1st, we had 11. So we've really grown a lot in the last few months. And a lot of my team, especially the newer ones, uh, the newer people on the team are all virtual, as I know a lot of you are. And I wanna just kind of see like a quick raise of hands here. Um, how many of you are strictly 100% virtual consultants? Scrolling through, okay, I see some hands. All right, and how many of you are strictly 100% cooking, in-home cooking shows? And I'm guessing the rest of you are somewhere in between. Do a little bit of both. Anybody doing a little bit of both there? Excellent. Very good. Okay, that gives me a little bit of an idea. I am also doing both. I love the cooking show over anything else, um, but I do the virtual parties as well. So, um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving our crazy growth we've had. And um, just to put things in perspective for you guys, and everybody's been coming on and kind of sharing some of their amazing paychecks they've had. And we just had, my husband and I just had our largest paycheck come in in November, and it was over $7,100. I did eight shows in November, and it was a $7,100 paycheck. So it pays to grow a team, let me tell you. All right. So I told you why I started. Um, the reason I've stayed with Pampered Chef is honestly, I love it. I love what I do. I love having all the gadgets in my kitchen. And um, I really like helping others be able to leave their full-time jobs, just like I was able to not have to worry about going back to work after losing mine. Uh, we've got so many people that just find Pampered Chef and our team to be their family, their sense of belonging. And I just love having this new family and all these new friends. Um, and I love that so many more people have been able to get some of those extra things they want in their life without having to worry about how they're going to pay for them. So being able to afford those extras is huge. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. So, um, so far in the I Believe program, we have worked on the belief in yourself, in your company, in the process of booking shows, uh, holding shows. Um, and I know last week we worked on booking, 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 and filling your calendars. And I saw some hands raised a few minutes ago. You guys have been working on that, which I love to see. And um, now you guys all have access to, and hopefully have been using, since everybody here is doing virtual in some aspect, the, the virtual um, post coaching, the virtual party Google Doc that we have. Everybody's using that, correct? If you're not, if you don't have access to it, if you don't know what I'm talking about, reach out to your director because it's amazing. All right, I'm about to get a sizzle going here. So bear with me. All right. So, um, like I said, we're going to talk about the nitty gritty of your show tonight. And of course, I'm mostly cooking. And I know you guys are a mix. Now, one of the things that is super duper important is really giving your guests, whether it's in person or virtual, really giving them a sense of our products and what they can do and how they can use them, okay? So I've got two cameras set up here. 
So you're going to see me for a few minutes and then I'm hopefully fingers crossed can be able to switch the uh, speaker view so that you can see what I'm doing down here. Uh, but what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to prepare a recipe for you guys, share some tips and things along the way that I always share at my shows. And if you are not doing cooking shows, then uh, I hope that this either inspires you to give one a try because they're really fun, even if it's just yours and you're on home, invite a few friends over and try it. Or up your going live game. Now, I know a lot of you go live on your Facebook pages, on your events, on your groups. Um, and I know a lot of you are scared to do it, but the more you can and the more you can get people to see these products in person, the better your shows are going to be. Trust me, okay? So make sure you are going live, okay? Um, so quick raise of hands. Who here feels confident talking about every single product that we have to offer in the catalog? Scroll through and see if I see any hands. I'm guessing I'm not going to see any. All right, that's okay. Love the honesty. Now, who here has at least a couple, even if it's just one or two products that you feel super duper comfortable about, you know, talking about if you like go-to products that you could definitely talk all day about, share lots of tips and info about. Everybody's got that one favorite. Yep, I see some hands. Good, 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 good. And it's great to focus on those. Absolutely. Um, I would highly encourage you to get out your products and use them. Sometimes, sometimes I pick dinner based on a product that I want to use just because I want to see what other things I can do in my grill pan. Or I haven't gotten out my deep cover baker in a while and so I want to make something in there. So it's a really great idea to branch out, get yourself out of your own box sometimes and really learn your products. Um, because how many of you have a product maybe that came in your kit that you wouldn't necessarily have purchased otherwise because you don't know what to do with it, right? Like a lot of us have that and now once you have it, you get to use it a little bit more and now you're starting to love it. So all of our products are, this, are just like that. All of your customers feel the same way. Your customers and your hosts, they can see the picture in the catalog, but until they see it in person or try it in person at a cooking show, they don't really get a feel for what it truly can do. And that's really why a lot of the the show averages are higher for cooking shows because people are getting their hands on the product and that's huge, okay? Now, one of the things that we need to do, of course, to really maximize this is post coaching. Let me grab my tongue. They were in the dishwasher. All right, post coaching, super duper important. Because you can come up with a great recipe, you can go live, you can practice your cooking show and go do a live cooking show, but until you have guests there watching, it doesn't do a whole lot of good. So it's really important to make sure that you are doing good host cooking. And in your virtual parties, that can be just as easy as letting your host know that, hey, Thursday night after the kids go to bed, I'm going to do a cooking demo around eight o'clock and I would love for you and all your friends to be on. Advertise it in that group, in that party, have your host talking about it, get her or him excited about it and really sharing so that you get a ton of people there watching you live because then it's a great opportunity for them to ask questions also while you're there live. Okay. So there are, and then of course the in-person parties, as many people there as possible, right? Like if your host is cleaning the kitchen and scrubbing the toilet for one guest, it might as well be 10, right? There's no reason not to have a full house. The more the merrier always, okay? So some things that you might want to do to really increase the, um, the there's a word I'm looking for and I wrote it down. I don't know. Increase your sales and bookings, right? Make your, your live cooking as successful as possible. There are a few tips that I wanna share with you. First of all, big ticket items, okay? Everyone knows how to use a little spatula. Yes, we have some great things to share about knives, but we don't need to make a whole video. Well, you could make a short video for the knife usage, um, but you don't need to necessarily make a whole video based on that. Um, not a long cooking demo, rather. But think about your grill pan. Think about your manual food processor, your rock craft, 
okay? Stoneware. Some of those bigger items, those large ticket items, those are the ones you really want to focus on for a couple of reasons. One, people who order those straight up, that's up in your sales. Two, people that look at those and really, really want them are going to book parties because they're going to be talking about it and saying, oh my gosh, that chicken looks so good. I wish I could smell it through the TV or through the computer. You know, then you can start that conversation with them. And if they're not ordering it now on the party, you can tell them that, oh my gosh, right now you can get it half off because right, everything in the catalog is available to our hosts right now, half off. It always is, right? They don't know it always is, but you can tell them, make a big deal. Like you can get this for 50% off. And of course, some items might be on, on special coming up, which is another great thing to focus on. If you've got those big tools coming up on special 60% off, those are great things to focus on right now to use in your live videos, right? Like, and right now the recruiting special with the quick cooker, great time to make a recipe in the quick cooker um, and, and go live sharing that because they can get that free as a new consultant. They can get it 60% off as a host. So it's a really good opportunity, really good time to do those, um, those kind of recipes. All right, also when you have things on special, even the items that are on special for guests, Having those in your videos just to flash them quick and show them that, oh yeah, this is the one you're gonna get free, goes a really long way as well, okay? The other thing you really wanna try to incorporate are as many tips as possible. And they might seem little to you, and especially if you share them over and over and over again, to you it seems like no big deal, but there's people watching that maybe don't know some of those tips, don't know some of those tricks, don't know some of those facts about food, and to them, it's gonna be really exciting and it's gonna be new. So throwing in those little tidbits to make it educational for your guests is huge, okay? And then of course, you really wanna pick recipes that are delicious, ones that look really nice, things that people are really going to wanna to try, okay? Now I picked a recipe that is, um, that can be made with your new consultant kit, okay? So if you are looking for recipe ideas, you can just go to um, in consultants corner if you go to my shows then recipes and resources there's actually a little tab for new consultant recipes and they're all recipes that can be made with the new consultant kits and they have different recipes for each of the kits since they all have different products in them i'm going to turn this off and um you can always add in other products that you have on hand that you want to use um, move this up here. There we go. You can always add in other products that you have that don't come in the kit, um, but especially for those of you who are new and you don't have a whole lot in your kitchen yet, maybe you're brand new to Pampered Chef and you only have what's in your kit, there are bunches of recipes that you can make just with what you have, okay? And it's okay and it's wonderful to do those. And even if you make the same recipes over and over or save the video and post it again and again so that people can see you and get to know you and watch you making the recipe, that's going to be key, okay? So tonight I am actually making the Chipotle chicken nacho dip. Now I've got the chicken already going um, and that's actually it's finishing up right now um, just because I wanted to kind of speed things along. Um, but this is a recipe that can be made with the starter kit, all right? You can make the chicken, you can throw it on the stone and throw it in the oven. And when it comes out, you can chop it up with a knife and a cutting board. You can make the rest of the dip in the batter bowl, put it on top, throw the whole thing in the oven to melt it all together. And this is a dip that you can serve with chips, you can serve it with veggies. I'm actually gonna use it tomorrow to put in between tortillas and make quesadillas with it because it's going to be excellent, okay? Lots of different things that you can do with, with just dip. And you can definitely mix it up with different flavors, ones that your family would like, different vegetables, um, different meat, different cheese, whatever you like, okay? Now, if you have the deluxe kit, you've got a rock crack, right? And so you can use your rock crack because you can make this chicken still in the oven or on the stovetop or in the microwave using your rock crack. So you have a lot of versatility there, right? And it's a great way to talk about the rock crack with your guests that are watching because you can use it in so many different ways. And if you just share that those two chicken breasts, you can have them done in the microwave in five to six minutes, depending on how big they are. Or you can just throw it in the oven and walk away for a few minutes. Or you can do it on the stovetop and, and sear the sides and get that 
that nice flavor going. You can use the same pot to do all those things. And that is a big, big seller for people that have one pot that can do all of those different features, right? And it's one thing to come on and just say, oh, this is the rock rock. You can use it in your microwave, on the stove top, in the oven. But when you give people an actual example, an idea of say the chicken and tell them it's five to six minutes in the microwave, tell them how long it could be in the oven. When you give people that solid example, they start thinking about the recipes that they make and how this could come in handy, okay? So that's one of the things that a lot of people do is they just start spitting out all the, all the features of a product, but really you wanna get people sold on some of the foods that they're gonna make, like make them hungry and wanting it, like literally hungry for it, okay? Now I'm focusing on the ultimate kit tonight because it is our most popular kit. 66% uh, of people who join Pampered Chef end up getting the ultimate kit because it's a fabulous deal. And so what this allows you to do is it allows you to use your grill pan, which is what I'm doing with our chicken, and you can use your rock crock and your food processor. Um, I had the, the raw chicken in the batter bowl as I was getting ready. So you can show off quite a few more products and really talk about them, okay? So like I said, this is a great recipe that you can do with any kit that you already have. So I'm gonna walk you through it and uh, at the end, I'm gonna definitely take questions. I wanna hear some of your aha things, maybe some things that stand out. Um, write down little tips that you hear along the way because I'm gonna be sharing with you things that I share at my shows. And I do get a lot of great feedback on some of the little tips that I share that again, to me, are you know no big deal but for other people especially people that don't cook a lot it, it's a big deal to learn some of these little things okay so i'm going to see and i'm going to need some head nodding here to make sure that this works okay i'm going to see if i can switch to speaker view but move over to the other screen one second All right. Okay, if you are not muted, I'm gonna mute everybody. Make sure we're all muted. And okay, I'm not seeing, here, here's what I'm gonna do. There we go, we'll just pin this video, which means, All right, can everybody still hear me? A little nod, thumbs up, perfect, okay. All right, so now what you guys can do, if you want to be able to see the screen bigger where I'm cooking, you can actually click on the, the video of my stovetop and there should be a little button that says pin video and you'll be able to pin it to make it nice and big so you can see it, especially for those of you who are on the computer. I don't know about the phone. I think for the phone you can just kind of scroll over to it. Anyway, all right, so we're starting out with the grill pan here, and I've got our chicken all ready to go. I heated up the grill pan for about five to six minutes, just on medium heat on the stove top here, just to get ready to go. Now I heat it up with the press right in there because we want that press to be nice and warm too. So that helps cook the chicken, both top and bottom, but I did flip it halfway through cooking. So what we have here is this beautiful chicken. Do you guys see the grill marks on here? It is so nice to be able to make chicken, grilled chicken, indoors. And I don't know about you guys, but for us, it gets kind of cold. And those New Yorkers, I know a lot of you guys are in New York, you've got that giant storm coming. There is no grilling outside for you with two feet of snow. But with the grill pan, you can, you can make grilled chicken just like this inside in about 10 minutes, which is a lot faster than waiting for that grill outside to warm up. All right. So once we have our chicken cooked, I am going to use our thermometer and just double check the temperature. Uh, chicken we wanted about 165. And I've got a, a great tip to share with you guys with, about this uh, thermometer here. So I don't know if you know this, but on our thermometer, about halfway up, you're not going to be able to see it in the video probably, but there's a little notch right on, on the post there, about halfway up. And you want to make sure that this gets submerged into your, your meat and your food that you are checking. You want to make sure that, that gets submerged at least up to that mark, if not further. So what that means is if you're just sticking your thermometer in like this to test your chicken, it's going to read low. 
All right, so if your thermometer is reading low, that's mean, that means you don't think it's cooked all the way yet. It, you're going to want to try to get up to 165, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to keep cooking it. And when you keep cooking, that means you're going to overcook your chicken. So actually what you want to do is you want to pick up your chicken this way and put the thermometer in sideways like this. All right, now we're gonna get a much more accurate reading. Okay, and again, I don't know how well you can see that in the, in the phone there, but it's still creeping up. So I'm just gonna hold on to this for a second and just see how it um, pan, pans out here. Now, if you noticed, I cooked the chicken and then I turned off the heat and I just let it rest for a minute or two. Uh, I knew that it was just about done, but I wanted to stay warm and finish cooking because the chicken is going to continue to cook for a little bit while it rests, all right? And we are right about 165. Perfect. That's exactly where we want to be for nice, tender, juicy chicken. All right. So we've got our chicken all done. That can just hang out there for a minute. Fun tip, just so you guys know, there are cards available um, on Consultant's Corner at that link that I, I told you about. For a lot of the recipes, you can just print these out. You can laminate them. You can use them at cooking shows, or you can use them when you are doing your virtual or your virtual Facebook lives. And it has the recipes. It has shopping lists for all the ingredients. It has products to have ready, things to do ahead of time, step-by-step um, -step instructions for you. So these are really great. Make sure you check this out. Okay. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to take our rock rock and we are going to just soften our cream cheese and as you can see I already did that so that it's all ready to go for you guys so we're softening the cream cheese and we're actually going to add a little bit of the chipotle rub all right the chipotle rub is what I have on the chicken also now another tip about the chicken before I threw it on the grill pan I had it in the batter bowl if you remember I actually just threw it in there with a little bit of uh, just canola oil, you can use any kind of oil you want. And you just uh, put a little bit of oil in there and I made sure to cover all of the, all the chicken with it. And I just sprinkled in some chipotle rub. I flipped it over a few times, just kind of let it sit and marinate for a couple of minutes. And then I threw it in the grill pan. Now, because the grill pan has these nice grooves, right? That's how you get those nice grill marks on your chicken. But if you try to put the oil in your pan, uh, first of all, of course, it's a nonstick pan, so you're in good shape there, but you've got a cast iron press, right? And if you try to put the oil in the pan, it's going to sit in those grooves and it's not going to do anything to help you out. So you want to actually put the oil right on your chicken, okay? And when you, of course, just like when you make sandwiches, right? Grilled cheese sandwiches, you always put the butter on the bread. Same concept here. And by the way, grilled cheese sandwiches made in the grill pan. You can make four at a time and it presses them together and the cheese gets nice and gooey. Oh, they're amazing. I love it. All right, back to our cream cheese. We've got our cream cheese. We've got some chipotle rub, um, about one and a half tablespoons. My jar was almost empty, so we just dumped it in. Okay. And now we're going to get some green onions and some cilantro ready. Okay, we'll set this aside for a moment. All right. All right, now for our green onions and cilantro, we are going to use the manual food processor. My friends, this is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. I absolutely love it. I like to call him Manuel because he makes delicious salsa. Oh, you're ready for grilled cheese? Absolutely, I hear you, girl. So good. Can you even imagine on like a really snowy day, you can make a nice batch of, of tomato soup in your rock crack and a bunch of grilled cheese sandwiches in the grill pan? Oh my gosh, they're so good. And a fun tip about tomato soup and tomatoes in general, if you add a little bit of fresh mint to any dish that has tomatoes, the mint actually brings out the tomato flavor a little bit more. And uh, so whenever we make tomato soup, even if it's a Campbell's can, we always put a little bit of fresh mint in there and it just gives it a little extra oomph of flavor. And no, it does not taste like mint. It just brings out the tomato. All right, so we're gonna take our green onions, we're gonna throw them right in our manual food processor. And of course, I cut them up a little bit first, you know, just into small-ish pieces so that they fit in there. Uh, we don't wanna put the whole tall green onion in and try to wind it around. It won't chop up very well, all right? So we're gonna put our green onions in here and chop. Now, I always like to let people know that 
the manual food processor, it mixes while it chops, just because of how the blades are made. They're at a little bit of an angle, so it's constantly mixing the food while it's chopping. So what this allows you to do is just constantly add ingredients in here, and it'll mix them around as it's chopping it up. Now, of course, if you go nice and slow, it'll help, it'll start mixing things. But if you really want to chop things up, especially herbs and green onions, you want to, you know, get your workout in. This is your arm workout for the day, and you really want to give it some speed, okay? Now, at cooking shows especially, like live cooking shows where people are there and getting their hands on, I really, really try to get them to try the manual food processor because I want them to feel the fact that it does take a little bit of oomph to get it going. I don't want them to get the product home and be moving it slowly like this and wondering why it's not chopping. So I definitely make sure to let them know that and I highly encourage them to come and try it. All right, we're gonna add some cilantro. Now you'll notice I just cut the top right off of my bunch of cilantro here. Cilantro has these nice, tiny, tender little stems and especially near the top, you really don't need to worry about picking all the leaves off because the stems are so tiny and tender and they chop up so well in the manual food processor that you just don't need to take time to worry about that. All right, now this is gonna be the point where my husband is gonna start wishing that we had salsa being made because he loves cilantro. He's gonna smell this. Another really cool thing about the manual food processor, something I always share, is that it does come with that lid that snaps right onto the bowl. Now here's a few ways. I want you to be able to see. Here's a few ways that that lid comes in really handy. So first of all, if you have any leftovers, right? If you have leftover salsa, which does not happen in my house, right? Because of the husband I just told you about, right? If you have leftover salsa, you can just put that lid on and you can throw it in the fridge and you don't need to dirty another bowl for storage, okay? Now, here's the other thing you can do. If you're using your manual food processor for dinner, you're chopping up onions or carrots or tomatoes or onions, cilantro, whatever you're chopping up to make dinner, of course we can take our spatula and we can scrape all of it out and get this nice and clean, but what if you don't? What if you just dump it out and leave some of that residual on the edges, okay? Then what you do is you can just put that lid on and throw it in your fridge. Leave the blade right in there. Now, tomorrow morning, you can open it up, crack a couple eggs in there, pump it a few times, dump it in your pan or in your ceramic egg cooker and you have an instant omelet complete with some of those veggies from the night before. It's a perfect way to make a quick and easy breakfast the next day and it's a great tip to share with your customers and your guests because they love that tip it's something they wouldn't have thought of okay all right so we've chopped up our um, onion and our cilantro nice and finely chopped isn't that nice i love to show people and i love to show people you did not see me scrape down the sides at all i chopped up the onion i added the cilantro and look at how well it is mixed okay that's how great our, our food processor is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the blade out. And we're gonna add about half of this to our rock crack. All right, so we'll add half in there. And this we're gonna set aside, we're gonna use it as a topping when we are completely done. So I'll set that aside over here. Oh, it smells good. Okay, now we're gonna grate some cheese. Let me get this out of the way. All right, now in Wisconsin, we love our cheese, let me tell you. And there's a lot of little tidbits I like to share with my guests about cheese that some of them people know, some of them they don't. So first of all, I always, always, always tell my hosts to get a block of cheese. And just beware, depending on the recipe that you send them, it will, it will tell them, even this Chipotle chicken nacho dip, it'll say, grated cheese right in the ingredient list. So I make sure when I send them the list to take that out and put block. I write one eight ounce block, all right? And I make it very specific. And sometimes they still get grated, that's fine. But usually they follow directions and get the block. So I can show off our amazing coarse grater. Now, here are some tips for using your cheese, okay? You want to make sure that you are when you open your cheese, just open it a little bit, pull back the plastic and cut off what you need. Then you can fold the plastic back up and store it, all right? 
You don't want to pull the whole block out, cut off what you need, and then store the rest. Because have you ever had that block of cheese you pull out of the fridge a few days later and it's got these little white spots starting on it? It doesn't matter how many times you wash your hands, we have bacteria on our hands and those are spots of mold starting, right? So if you just pull back the plastic, cut off what you need and fold it up again, then you don't have that. You don't have your fingers touching any of this cheese at all. Now today we're gonna to be grating up the whole block, so I'm just gonna pull it out. But I love to share that tip, all right? Now, some reasons I always ask people to share and even if you're going live, right, they can, they can comment and play along. And it's great to be interactive and ask questions. And I ask them, now you're all muted, so I'm not actually going to ask for answers from you guys. But I ask them, why do we buy a block of cheese instead of the grated? Right? Why am I going through this work? And then I jokingly tell them it's not just because I want to show off our amazing grater, okay? There are other reasons. Let's list them, okay? Blocks of cheese, they're cheaper, like per ounce, it's cheaper than the grated, already grated cheese. It's fresher usually, there's no preservatives in there, um, and there's been a lot of discussion lately about what goes on your cheese to make sure it doesn't stick together. Some people say sawdust, you'll see it listed as cellulose, you'll see it plant fiber. No matter what, whatever it is, it's not cheese and it doesn't melt well, and it doesn't belong on your cheese, okay? And see, grating a whole block of cheese does not take that much time. So this cheese is actually going to melt a lot better than if I got pre-grated cheese because we don't have that powder on there that doesn't melt. So this is going to melt really nicely and it's going to have a much better flavor. Now, please note that I was using the, the food holder. You see how nice this is? It has this spot here where I can put my fingers, right? It keeps my manicure nice and keeps extra protein out of my food. We don't need extra protein, okay? Use, use this piece. I have scars on my thumb to prove why you should always use it, okay? Don't think you don't need it. All right, so we've got our cheese all grated up here, and we are going to add about half of it in with our cream cheese. The rest of it's gonna go on as topping at the end. So we'll put that in there, just like that. And then we're going to get out our bell pepper, all right, and I'm going to, I'm going to take this and I'm going to just cut it open. I'm going to take the seeds out. Now, of course, if you have it, great place to show off the scoop loop and talk about all the different ways you can use this, especially carving pumpkins. Oh my goodness. It is so handy carving pumpkins. The first year I had this, my kids really wanted it and I really wanted to use it. So then I got more. The next year I was prepared and I had enough scoop loops for everybody. All right, get all the seeds out. And we're gonna actually use the simple slicer to, chop, to uh, slice this up on the number two setting. Oh, look at that, there's our little food holder again, our finger guard. Always, always use your finger guard. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to just slice this up. I'm gonna stack up my rings and I'm gonna kind of chop them up. You could also wedge this up and you could throw it in your manual food processor. This is just a way to show another product. I mean, it's always good to show more products, okay? Might as well. You're making a few extra dirty dishes, but guess what? You're gonna make a few extra sales and that's worth it, all right? Um, and then I'm gonna also show, we're gonna use the salad choppers and we're gonna cut up the chicken. Now I can do it right in the grill pan, right? Because the new one, you can use metal utensils right in there. And of course I'm careful because it's habit, but oh my gosh, look at how tender and juicy that chicken is. Now by letting it rest and not chopping it up right away, I let some of those juices reabsorb into the chicken so that it can stay nice and tender and juicy. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Look, it's just crumbling. Yum, 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 yum. All right. So I'm gonna finish putting these together here. We're gonna shred up the chicken, we're gonna put it right in. Now this, we, after everything's in here, we can throw it in the microwave just for three minutes or so. It's gonna help melt the cheese, melt the cream cheese. We can mix it all together. And then we can throw it in our, our um, slow cooker stand to stay warm. Perfect appetizer to take to parties. Like I said, we're gonna put it in the middle of quesadillas tomorrow night. Um, other things, have you guys used your, your salad choppers for anything other than chicken? I mean, I know they're made for salad, but I know a lot of people, especially with ones who have little kids, they use it to chop up the food on their plate. Like how genius is that to just chop, chop, chop so it's all bite-sized for them. 
You don't have to sit there with a fork and a knife chopping it up. It's brilliant. Uh, I've used these for onions, when the food processors and the dishwasher. I've used it for all sorts of veggies. Bacon, when you want to chop up freshly cooked bacon and you don't want to have to hold the bacon with your fingers, oh, no, no, no. You just use your salad choppers or your manual food processor. These are a must have, must have. All right, so as I'm finishing this up, I'm looking at the time and I know we're getting close to time. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm going to start taking some questions, see what you have as far as questions for me. And I'm just gonna kind of finish this up so that you can see the final product before you all go. All right, so let me go look at the chat quick and see. Um, Ooh, pizza sauce. Oh, oh, Christy hasn't had dinner. Oh man. Mac and cheese with the pre-grated cheese and the house smelled nasty. Ooh, I bet. Ooh, pork loin for barbecue sandwiches. Yes, great tip for the salad chopper. Excellent. Pork loin. I'm pretty sure the salad chopper is made more for me than anything else. I absolutely love it. All right. Um, so go ahead. I have all of you guys muted. So go ahead and unmute yourself and jump on in. Tell me if there's anything that stood out, any questions you have, I would love to hear from you guys. All right, we're getting low on the head. Yeah, hi. Hi, I've done the pork loin actually in the, the, um, the everyday rock crock in the microwave, depending on the size, will depend upon your cooking time, and then use, like I said, the, the choppers to chop it up for the barbecue. Awesome. How long does it, you said, of course, of course, time's always very depending on, um, on lots of factors, but how long did your pork loin take? Um, I just did one this past weekend and it took about 30 minutes because it was a, it was a pretty big piece. That's so still, that's, that's, that's still, to yeah. Put in your microwave and walk away and check on it later. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Any questions? Who here is going to uh, go try something new, branch out and try some recipes? Like I said, either live or a cooking show. Oh, good, yay, hands. Oh, I love seeing hands. I should go back to gallery view so I can see all of you guys. All right, so I would love to see hands. Is there anyone here who is strictly virtual who's thinking about trying a cooking show? Oh, good for you guys, good for you. All right, and who here? Who here has never gone live, Facebook Live, and done a recipe, Facebook Live? Who here has never done that? Oh, that's a lot of hands. Okay. I really challenge you guys to go and do it. It's fun, and people love it, okay? I started doing a couple months ago. I do every Thursday. I go on just on my regular Facebook page, and I make a cocktail. And let me tell you, people look forward to that cocktail every Thursday. I have people jumping on and watching me live right away. Now, I'm not saying you have to go do cocktails every week, but the point is, is that those are only somewhere between five and 10 minute videos. They're not long, but I do always try, if there's a little tidbit of information I can share about one of, maybe one of the liquors that I'm using, one of the ingredients I'm using, a story behind the cocktail, sharing just something a little extra is something that people really enjoy, right? So think about that. What can you add that's extra? A little extra tidbit when you are making a recipe, when you're going live, what is a little extra something that you have to share? All right. Anybody else have any, any things that stood up to them tonight? Things that sparked something in your brain that you want to share? All right. Well, doing the live, I'm sorry, doing the live, um, tidbits that you do during your virtual shows that's a good that was a good one that's something I haven't done yeah and you know and it doesn't like I said it doesn't have to be a big video honestly it could be you're just making dinner um maybe um like Sandy maybe it's you making your pork loin maybe it comes out of the microwave and you're about ready to chop it up and you do a quick two minute video just to say hey guys I just made this pork loin here's how long it took 
watch what I'm going to do with these salad choppers, right? Now you've just shown off either the rock rock or the deep cover baker, whichever you use, and the salad choppers. And it was a quick two minute video just to share, okay? Awesome, awesome. Um, salad choppers for meats, great tip, excellent. Oh, Christy, you can be super confident. Okay, I, you can do this, girlfriend. It is, it is fun. My other big tip for doing cooking shows is just do recipes that you know, okay? Do recipes that you feel confident with, comfortable with. And if you do the same recipe at every single cooking show, if you do the same demo in all your virtual parties, who cares? But if you know the recipe and you're comfortable with it, then that's going to come off and everybody's going to, they're going to see that, they're going to appreciate it, and you're going to look like you know what you're talking about. Um, I really was actually looking at the recipe tonight while I was cooking. I'm glad it didn't look that way, but I was. All right. Um, egg cookers. Oh, Small Ridge Baker with the bacon. Yes. Love it, love it. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me tonight. I am gonna go ahead and stop the recording so that we are right at our 40 minute time period. Um, but I am gonna stay on for a couple of minutes. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll turn it off, but I'm gonna stay on for a couple of minutes. Uh, so if you guys have any other questions or if you wanna chat, you can stay on. Um, I will be on Monday. I've set up an event in the I Believe group. So Monday, uh, late morning, late morning my time. I am going to be on Zoom and I'm gonna be there just available to chat with you guys. If you have any questions, if you wanna come share stories of, of live experiences from the weekend, I would love to hear from you. So Monday, I believe 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, which is 11 Eastern, I think is what I put, so. All right, thank you guys all for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. I am going to, like I said, I'm gonna stop the recording and then I'm gonna go put this in the microwave. And for those of you who wanna stick around for an extra three minutes, and see what it looks like, go ahead. All right, thank you guys for joining.